I suppose I think probably most people want to talk about the sex and love addiction, obviously, um, because sex sells, right? So that's probably you, uh, what you might say was the most interesting. Well, not that I'm buying tonight, but usually it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I told two, two Al-Anon jokes. I got to tell a sex addicts joke. I, that people want to go to a sex addicts anonymous meeting and hang out in the parking lot and wait for a relapse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm, but yeah. um, uh, right. no, that's... <laughs> You know, but uh, there is a stigma, though, too. It, I mean, I, I, this is years ago when I was in Israel. I, my first foray into 12 Steps was in Israel, and I would go to these old city recovery groups and uh, in Narcotics Anonymous. And there was a guy I knew named Brad. Brad's a very, they're always weird Brads. You never meet really a normal Brad. They're all a little off the radar. Sorry if anybody named Brad is listening, but it's an odd name. Um, not an odd name. You, I'm you, like you, Judah. You become, <laughs> you, well, you become your name. You become your name. <laughs> You become, I don't know, I'm, I'm very big into names. Um, That's true. But there was a, you, it, it, yeah. And when I name a character in a fictional piece of work, it, the name is the first, it, once I've got the name, I've got the character. Hmm. Yeah. That's true. And so there's what, something what to Gabrielle. What would a character called Judah be like? Mm. It's been done. <laughs> it's been done. Yes, ben Hur, yes. There's some great ben characters, Hur. yes. So thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs> what do you have, a teddy bear? Um, Raggedy Ann and Andy? Um, but, you know, it's like Gabby. You know, you be, you know, Gabby is like pleasant. You know, Gabby, Gabriella is very, you know. Fancy. Fancy, and it's very yeah. regal. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that has to do with anything. And so um, you're not going to call me Gabriella, are you? I'm because you've made the decision. That's not who I am. You are. You know. You seem very. You know what, Judah? Back off. I will back <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> that, that, I'm in a fellowship for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, I think it's great. And one of the things I love about the show is that we talk about you know, and I, I love that Lowell talked about it because I never would have expected this out of Lowell's mouth to want to talk about the scientific approach to things because I always look at Lowell sort of like you know in some ways very cut and dry you know and you are in some way you no know, it's perception you know and I never thought and I'm saying this as a compliment that you'd be interested in finding out the scientific approach to certain things because I really do believe it is so important as we go into this you know to learn about the science behind a lot of not that it, it means you're going to be solved with a pill but just to understand where things come from. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was interesting when we had Dr. Cohen last week um, on the program, and I encourage people to go back to our YouTube channel and watch the show from last week if you didn't catch it. Or, I'm sorry, it was actually two weeks ago. Um, but uh, Dr. Ko, I thought he did a really good job of explaining that there's so many levels to what's going on within the brain that we just are beginning to understand. And that the field of addiction mixed with the field of psychiatry is really just beginning to develop. I mean, it was it's just a few short years ago that people had very primitive understanding of um, both addiction and psych psychiatry and psychiatric illnesses in general. Well, so. well you know, one of the, the big the big landmark breakthrough, which came nine years ago with it from from work by NIA and NIDA, which mm -hmm. is National Institute of Drug Abuse. Uh, was that once you cross that invisible line in addiction and and not just alcohol addiction, but sex addiction or any of that, your neurotransmitters, your dopamine receptors are changed forever. Nothing is going to change them back. And your brain sends itself the message that there is a reward coming. Even as you go into the destructive behavior, your, your, your brain is flooded with, with this dopamine. It says, but it's going to feel so good. And you ask any alcoholic or addict, the highest you ever are is when you know you're, when you're going to score. Not, 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 not when you, you know, when you right. actually take the drug, but on the way to the dope man or on the way to the bar, that is when you're getting that rush. That's what they right. say, especially with process addictions like gambling. Or sex. It's, it's, it's not actually once the bet is uh, determined, bet. it's <laughs> everything up until it's determined. Right, but the important thing about mm -hmm. it is, is that, you know, when, when you're in a space where you're trying to get into recovery and you're thinking, oh, maybe I can just will myself out of this, or maybe I can just, like, change my situation, but you can't change your brain chemistry. It's the whole Pickle. Once you become, yeah, you yeah, know, once you become a pickle, you can never yeah. become a cucumber and, and, again. And that, to me, is part yeah. of the acceptance well, I, I of your think disease. This, and I think it speaks a lot to this whole issue of morality and, you know, um, and should we blame addicts for being addicts? You know, like uh, we were talking a lot about how um, Don the caller might be angry with her husband, and is it, you know, is, is it his fault that he's an addict? You know, what, when did he become an addict? Is it a moral failing? Is there like an allergy or, a, um, an, you know, an illness that he was predetermined to become an addict? And I think the truth is, is that we we're still trying to determine answers to a lot of those questions. Well, I think too, it's a disease with moral implications. 
And that's definitely true. Yeah, right? Right. I mean, well the put. moral behavior that comes out of the disease looks like so- sociopathy. You right. look like a psychopath. Right. I mean, you're lying, you're cheating, you're, you have various facades that you use, a classic psychopath. But if, uh, as Hervey Cleckley said in his book, The Mask of Sanity, that when, you, when the alcoholic gets sober, he loses his psychopathic symptoms in, in treatment, whereas the psychopath, you, you can't treat the psychopath. It's a personality disorder that's... You know, it's very difficult to change. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. But, now, uh, Gabby, well, you're talking about SLA. What, what yeah, is the I, difference I between? Actually, I, I really want to make a comment about this this whole Al-Anon thing, and because I was thinking about Don when I was sitting in there, and I have found for me in my relationships, not everyone in my life is in a 12-step program, and and I've had some tough relationships, a lot with some of my family members and that sort of thing, and I found that once I really, really focused on my own thinking and my own behavior and I healed those relationships healed I think just as though you know disease is contagious so is recovery and if you bring the light to the situation it's contagious and I feel like for Dawn you know if she can just make her recovery a full-time gig you know that and just leave him alone really honestly because you cannot control another person it's impossible and to have compassion for him and you know and expect miracles i really expect miracles he can turn around in an instant and and also just to look at him like a 10 month old baby and not to forget why she married him to begin with because she did make the choice to marry an addict one of the reasons you know? that I really like that we have this show is that, yes, it, you know, we talk a lot about getting sober or people that currently have problems in, with addiction, but we also talk a lot about once you get sober, what does your life become and what do you do and what, what, is, what is it that changes once you become sober? Um, Lowell, how, you know, how was that for you? When you got sober, did you expect what was going to happen? Did you foresee what your life would be like? If I would have written down the 10 things I wanted uh, the most in my first month of sobriety and then looked at my life a year later, I would have chronically underestimated all the possibilities. It, 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 in fact, for a long time, I thought it was like Amway. You know, that the more meetings I went to, the more good things happened. But then I found also five years into sobriety, I had a second bottom, not a drinking bottom, but that's when I really began to examine the uh, underlying conditions, you know, mm-hmm. through step work and things like that. Because I, I, I have this theory that there's nothing more dangerous than a, an alert alcoholic <laughs> and an alert <laughs> addict because five years into sobriety, my life was so much more unmanageable. You know, when I was drinking, it was like, you know, where is, where is my car? Uh, how do I get to work today? Right, your world is so small. Yeah, who, you is, it, who is this woman that's laying next to me with no teeth? You know, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. And, but then five years later it was, I've got a mistress, I've got a wife, I've got three houses, I've got two jobs. I, it, it, it just got crazy. And that's when you're going to Debtors Anonymous. Yeah, well, but, that, but that's when I really got serious and said, there's something underlying here that needs to be treated. And you had a lot of time on your hands, my God to handle all well, that. Well, I think well, that's, that's the a, thing is that when you're drinking... <laughs> there is no time for anything else. <laughs> there, there, there is no time for anything else. And, you know, it, when I was first getting sober in New York, I used to hear these people say, my God, I don't. there aren't enough hours in the day to do what I have to do. And I'd be like, try being new like me. To trust me, there's 24, yeah. there's plenty of time. And... I mean, alcoholics and addicts within a day could cause a lot of mass destruction. Yeah. You know, you you hear our stories and then it's like day two. But if you don't if you don't treat those underlying conditions and a lot of them have moral implications, you can get into far more trouble with that alcoholic personality and that Mm -hmm. addictive personality because now you're alert right and you can remember and you can manipulate better and you can con better and you can it's like the old story you know what do you get when you sober up a horse thief you get a sober Sober horse thief thief. it's a better horse thief right well and also i think it's important you know that a lot of people that are sober i mean one of the main reasons i believe that people go out from my experience because most of my friends are in some sort of a program either alcoholics anonymous or not but but that you know people go out over finances they go out over relationships they go out over so many different things see i have a question about that i mean and andrew i'm sure can I, 
Are we I, going? I, I, we're going to take a break. break. So. We'll discuss that when we come back. The number here is 877-8830-830. That's 877-8830-830. Listen to Clean Radio. Is this your, Afro Man. It's your favorite song, isn't it, Judah? It's, no, it's not one of my favorite <laughs> songs. There's 700 gigabytes of internet for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just want to. I just want to say I'm sorry for cursing on clean radio. That's okay because nobody heard. But it is sort of ironic to it curse will, on clean radio. You will be able to see it though on the YouTube channel. Yeah, video. So, cause, <gasps> yes. So, but right. you know, so, unedited. So we were in the studio. We're first of all with the lovely and talented Gabby Francis and a great, prolific crime writer, nonfiction and fiction, lo- low coffee and, screenwriter, too, and yeah. screenwriter. Um I just, I'm, I'm always say I love that you were on Forensic Files. Um, one of my favorite TV shows on the air. Um, okay, so you, what I love is that we're in the studio during the break and we're going back and forth and because that is, that's what this is supposed to be about, where there is either conflicting thought or we talk, because for a long time in certain 12-step programs, you couldn't discuss these things. No crosstalk. There's, right, no crosstalk. The idea of you, the idea of you saying out loud, I need, me- I need, I need medicine was a kibosh was put on that. The idea that, you know, which is so diametrically opposed for me to the twel- to, to the, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous mm-hmm. where it says, you know, you might need to go to get outside help. Now, getting back to our discussion about, you were saying before the break, um, you were talking about with your Al-Anon program and, you know, cleaning up your side of the street, mm-hmm. which is extremely important because... Well, just keeping the focus on yourself and and being a way shower by example, I think is huge. You know, attraction, not promotion. And I, I really, you, you can't, you just, you can't control another person. And 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 then, and then you don't even get to know what you want until you know yourself. You know, and I know Dawn was also mentioning that she was using with him as well, and so that could be where they connected. And anyway, the point is that you know what we were talking about is that. Once she has her own house in order, then things will all make sense. Either this relationship will totally fall into place or it won't. And sometimes that could just be amazing. And one thing I know, let go and let God, you know, and and if you are really like connecting with your God, whatever that is for you, um, then then again, it's like really life is like magic. I really see my life in a magical way because there's nothing I can predict and and if I'm really good with me everything looks pretty beautiful. Well, you know, and, and the thing is is in the whole, whole thing with codependency when you're spending your time managing somebody else's life, yeah. that's time you're not spending taking care of your own life. In fact, it's a form of addiction yeah, in of itself it. in that it allows you to escape yourself. And, and and get involved in that other person's life. And that's exactly what drugs do f- uh, for you and alcohol does too. It allows you to escape yourself and and, and not sit with your real right, real, real right. self. But mm-hmm. you, you mentioned something earlier that I wanna comment on. You said that you've seen people relapse over you know, bad finances and romance. I see more relapses over good times. Uh, there's an old saying that if you're having a bad day, go to a meeting. If you're having a good day, run to a meeting. Mm 